Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're gonna talk about this card right here, or what I thought was this card right here, which is an EVGA NVIDIA RTX 3090. A very high-end GPU in the consumer segment, not necessarily a high-end GPU compared to a lot of the things that we review, but at the same time, um, you know, we needed a RTX 3090 and it was on sale for Prime Day, and I ended up buying it. But what ended up happening was I got scammed by Amazon.com. And the reason I got scammed is because although this is the box for an EVGA RTX 3090, it's actually not. This thing actually inside was a RTX 3070, and it was number one, completely ingenious what the scammer did, and number two, uh, it's also something that should be alarming to just about anybody in the computer industry. In this video, we're gonna explain what went down and why I think it's actually a much bigger issue than just I got the wrong GPU. And hey, I really want to hear as we go through this what you guys think because frankly, um, you know, I was inconvenienced by this and, and we'll move on with life. It's not a, that huge of a deal. But on the other hand, I think that there are bigger questions and I just want to see how you guys feel. Maybe you've seen something similar, experienced something similar. Love to hear those in the comments. That actually, you know, helps engagement and will probably increase the reach of this video so others can know that this is a potential thing. So if you do have thoughts, again, look to the comments. Okay, so first off, let's just talk about what I did. So I ended up purchasing this EVGA GPU because it was cheap. It was 1349, I think, or 1350. And it was like Amazon Prime Day. And I was like, okay, well, you know, we need a GPU. We were actually gonna be using this for a new build that we're gonna use as a dedicated streaming box for all the STH, you know, like mini PCs and Project Tiny Mini Micro Nodes and all those kind of things that we review. I wanted a Steam streaming box. And so that's actually what we were gonna use it for. And I didn't want the GPU to be a bottle next, so I figured that would be a pretty good option. So I ended up just purchasing that because I saw the deal on Prime Day and they have gotten less expensive since then, but at the same time, I just needed one and I was traveling. I was actually going to Zurich and we were gonna do the NVIDIA Orin video uh, or the NVIDIA Jetson AGX Orin or whatever. That that uh, that video didn't go exactly as planned uh, in Zurich, but we'll still have a little bit of footage from that when we do the actual review of that video. Still, I only had a couple days because I was basically going to Zurich very soon Soon, and this was supposed to arrive in time and it required a signature delivery. So I ended up going to Zurich. I had to pay UPS to delay my delivery because of the signature delivery for a couple days until I got back in town. I was only in town one day and I'm headed off to New York right now. So it is, um, you know, definitely, definitely don't have a lot of time to get these kind of things in. But at the same time, you know, I, I kind of figured Amazon is usually pretty good. Um, I think they missed with Prime Day. But at the same time, I didn't really care that much because, you know, this was a very expensive package. The other thing that Amazon did was they actually bunched a bunch of things into, or a couple different orders into this package. So the package that I will be showing you very soon, that actually didn't just have this, say, $1,350 GPU, a little $1,460 with tax, but it also had a couple other items and it was probably a box that was valued at over $2,000. When I got back from Zurich, Switzerland, and I saw the box, um, clearly something was amiss. So here's the actual box, and you can kind of see, this is the bottom of the box, and you can see that we have our Amazon Prime uh, you know, tape here, and that's, you know, looks pretty good, right? So I actually opened this side because I wanted to leave the other side intact, just because, um, I thought there'd be questions on it from either Amazon or maybe, you know, if I did do an article, which I decided to do on this or a video, um, I th kind of thought you guys might want to see what it actually looked like when it arrived. So here's the look at the box as it arrived from the UPS delivery person on my doorstep. And I'm just going to turn this thing around just so you can see all of the glory. Now, this is actually how the box arrived. I haven't done anything to this. So you can see that there was probably some Amazon tape up here. Uh, by the way, I did, I did uh, use gaff tape on some of the label information, but you know, th there was some tape, but it seems like something so bad happened to this box that they decided to like fold the flaps over onto one another and then just use a ton of, I guess, clear tape and then say, oh, not nothing happened. What, 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 what happened there? Nothing. This is obviously how it came from Amazon. Now, fun fact is that my first job when I was, I think like 15 years old, Tom Fallon, who was the uh, Infinera uh, CEO for years, but back then he was running a factory for Cisco systems. My first job in tech was actually working in a factory at Cisco and Tom was super awesome gave me the job so thank you Tom I'm sure you're not watching this but if you were thank you and the wonderful 15 year old me one of my job responsibilities other than checking for ESD compliance on the RMA floor was also if we got in a shipping issue I had to go and pack boxes of these very very expensive 10 plus thousand dollar Cisco line cards for like the telecom industry and so I got pretty decent actually back then at packing boxes because that was like your first job and you're trying to do a good job and that's what I did. 
this would not have passed muster. And in fact, most of the time, frankly, Amazon boxes don't come like this. So something clearly happened to this during shipping. But as I opened up the box from the other side, I noticed that there was something else that was a little bit amiss. I will just say that the other items that arrived in this box arrived no problem, but when I looked at the GPU, something was definitely off. Now the box itself looks just like an EVGA box, and it actually is. It says, you know, there's like the EVGA, it says For the Win 3 Ultra, and then we have our NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090 at the bottom. So this is clearly the RTX 3090. Now, one thing you're gonna notice is that this is actually one of EVGA's cooling solutions, and that look is actually very important for what's about to happen next. I actually think that the ICX3 cooling solution or whatever they call this with the RGB and all that kind of stuff, I think that was actually part of why I ended up getting scammed on this. So when I looked at the top of the box, I noticed something that was a little bit different than the normal GPUs that we buy. Uh, first off, there, the two seals, there's a seal over here, which I think is like the EVGA seal. And then there's another EVGA seal over here. They were both open and that kind of raised a little red flag to me because if you look at the invoice and I'm gonna show you the invoice here, of course, with some address information blocked out and order information blocked out, but you can see that this was condition new. It was purchased from Amazon Services LLC or Amazon.com Services LLC. So Amazon.com was a seller and it's being represented in new condition. And that is super important because you should not have broken security labels on something like that, right? The other thing that was kind of interesting is that we have this LPN uh, barcode over here. And I, I just kind of thought that that was really interesting because we shouldn't have an LPN barcode uh, on, on a normal box, I don't think. I think this actually means that it was returned. And so it looks like that this box was returned from another uh, purchaser and then it was put back into new stock. Now, of course, if it had the RTX 3090 inside and uh, it was totally untouched, maybe I probably wouldn't have cared because I'm, I'm kind of in a time crunch to actually get the streaming system set up. But uh, when I opened it, well, uh, that's not exactly what happened at all. So just kind of opening this, this uh, box up, we're gonna just open this up so you can kind of see what's going on here. And I'll have some photos of this too, just so you can kind of see what's going on. But here, here's the actual inside box. This is kind of like an EVJ box. Uh, quick, quick, really kind of fun thing here. Whoa, that was kind of close. Uh, quick fun one here is that we actually had one of these EVJ boxes that William Harmon, who used to do our GPU reviews on STH, he now works at Sabrent. Um, you know, he, he actually and I, we had a box that was just like this from EVGA. And we probably shipped back and forth to each other, like probably two, three dozen GPUs and just like this kind of little black box. So super useful little boxes uh, and I'm very familiar with them. This definitely looks like the right box, but then you know you open it up and you see that we have all the foam and everything. Looks of course like an EVGA package. And then you, know, you open up the next thing and you look inside and what do you see? Well, down here we have the little EVGA badge and we also have a little booklet, which looks about right. And then, you know, you get this whole GPU here and it looks frankly, just like the one that's on the box. I mean, it says EVGA, the, the ESD bag says EVGA, but if you look at the box itself, you know, the, the heatsink design looks the same. And so, you know, I, I could definitely, I, when I first opened it, I thought that, oh, well, you know, the 3090 is just in there, whatever. But then uh, a little bit later, I ended up opening or taking the GPU out and I saw something completely different. So when I took the GPU out, the first thing I noticed is that the ESD seal that's on this thing is actually was still there. And so I, I thought that, that was good. I was like, hey, maybe maybe this was a return, which I'm not overly happy about. But on the other hand, you know, if it's still a sealed GPU inside of this box, then maybe I don't really care because, you know, I just kind of want something that's sealed, right? And, you know, looking at this GPU, a lot of this looks just like the thing, you know, through the bag, especially it looks just like the one that we saw on the outer box. So I could totally see, you know, how I was confused because I look at the thing, it fit the fit the foam that was in the box. It seemed everything seemed right. You know, I thought this was totally the right thing. And then uh, I finally looked uh, up here and uh, you probably can't see this. So I'll maybe take a photo of this or something, but it actually says uh, in the RTX 3070. So where it says EVGA GeForce RTX 3070 here, um, you know, that, that's of course not, not the GPU I was expecting because this is supposed to be a much more expensive RTX 3090. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't really know why I got this one other than I think to the best guess of what happened is that Amazon sold this GPU or the, the you know, full new, new GPU to someone else that person said, oh, I didn't, I, I, I didn't, I'm, I'm returning this, but maybe I didn't open it, even though the, the security seals were opened, which is of course weird in itself, but maybe they said, hey, they didn't open it. And Amazon said, okay, we're gonna just take this GPU, nobody opened it, and we're gonna go put it back into new stock. Again, remember from the invoice, I purchased this from amazon.com 
and it says it's new stock, it's not used or something like that, because I would have expected that if it was used, I would have gotten a discount. And I actually, frankly, just would not have bought this GPU if it was used. But that brings up a host of questions, and I really wanna get your feedback on these, right? Like, like first off, I, I just don't think that they should be, I mean, I think that there should be a process at Amazon where they actually just go look and see if security seals on boxes are broken before those boxes are then resold or put into new stock. I mean, in some ways, I guess I was lucky that I got an RTX 3070 instead of like just bricks. But at the same time, you can totally see how even if you were a non like super technical person or something like that, you would look at this GPU and you'd say like, hey, why do I have an RTX 3070 instead of a 3090? But if you're just doing this like super fast, maybe you have like like time quotas or something like that. You just look, you say, okay, well, it looks, the heat sink and all that looks exactly like the one that's on the outer box. Looks like I have the right unit. And so, okay, cool. We're gonna just say that this is fine. Again, the security seals are broken, so it shouldn't have been a new unit, but I, I can kind of see how maybe that would happen. At the same time though, there's a much broader question here. So number one, just think about what happened to me. Number one, I'm, I'm, we're not gonna get to be able to go and set up the system that I really need set up today because the GPU, now I have to go send it back. Two, I had to go through the process of like, you know, when you think about when I'm gonna go do this return, well, now I'm gonna be returning a, RTX 3070 in an RTX 3090 box, right? Which I don't want Amazon to come back at me and say like, hey, hey dude, why, why are you sending us a 3070? It's supposed to be a 3090 uh, because that's what I got. So it puts me in a like actually kind of really weird position. And so I actually called up and uh, I talked to Amazon and said, hey, this is what I got. I didn't say like, hey, I do tech reviews for a living. And oh, by the way, this is actually a pretty low end GPU compared to the fact that we have a bunch of NVIDIA A100s over there. We have a NVIDIA A4000, A4500. I mean, we have a lot of very high-end, much more expensive GPUs. Uh, and I think we're gonna be doing the AMD GPUs pretty soon. But at the same time, um, you know, like, like to me, this is not a super expensive GPU, but I think to most consumers, this is a very expensive part. And it's just because this is what we do for a living. So Amazon, during that return process, actually said, okay, cool. I got, you know, someone on the phone, they said, okay, cool, return it and get what's going on. And they gave me a return label. So now I have to go to UPS or the UPS store and give them the return label with this thing, send it back and hope that there's no issue with the refund transaction. So just in summary, I basically lost the time because I'm not able to go use the GPU. And that's always a risk whenever you order anything online, that's fine. I'm to go through a return process where I'm actually returning because that's what I got a different product than what I was sold, which is just kind of weird. And I'm very nervous about doing that. And then I'm having to spend my time to go and actually bring this thing back to the UPS store, which, you know, the closest UPS store is like 15, 20 minutes away. And I wish I could just have a label because we have thermal printers and like, you know, we, we ship so much stuff out because when we send back review samples and stuff, we have all that kind of stuff. And so I kind of wish I just had a label, but I get it. Um, you know, but still something that I have to go do. I have to go out of my way to go do it. And, um, you know, frankly, that's, that's time is money to me. The last thought though is, I guess a little bit more profound and really important, right? We are in a era of computer hardware where there's a big question about hardware security. Now, the real one that I think that really launched this whole hardware security thing was the Bloomberg Supermicro spy chip article, which basically every single source that they have cited said, no, actually Bloomberg got it wrong. Also, they came up with a follow-up piece a couple days later with Yossi Applebaum and uh, said, hey, you know, this guy says that, that Supermicro products could be an issue. But it turns out that I got to do the follow-up interview of Bloomberg source. And he was like, I'm really angry at how, you know, the, the Bloomberg guys put my words and you know it, it just seems kind of like you know he, he was when I talked to him he was definitely not happy with how Bloomberg said because like they twisted what I said and they're not saying the right thing right so they, they mischaracterized what I said and also just on that Bloomberg article there are still people I don't know why that still believe that thing but frankly you know the other side to it is that there are people like at like major stock exchanges that you'd have like the security guard go and run and get all their super micro servers get x-rayed Bloomberg still uses super micro servers for their stuff so um, you know clearly their IT department didn't believe their editorial department in that either. And, you know, as an industry, though, I think that nobody's actually found, I mean, where, where are all the spike chips? Like if, if, you know, this is years down the line, and these are products that are pretty old, they should have gone through recycling, they should have been pulled out of production, and nobody's really finding these things. And we don't have like thousands of stories of people finding them. So it just kind of tells you that the Bloomberg article was clearly false. You might wonder what happened to the Bloomberg folks, they actually got promoted at Bloomberg for their fake news. But despite the fact that that Bloomberg story seems to be completely false, the one thing that it did do in the industry was really raise awareness of a problem. And that's the good side of this, which is raise the issue of hardware security. What could be implanted in devices? And the reason that this card freaked me out so much about that is just the fact that 
clearly the reason that I got this is somebody was scamming Amazon. They were trying to get their money, you know, get a different card, return the other one and, and pocket the difference. But think about if you wanted to be a nefarious actor and you wanted to go and replace something with a modified version that was not secure and then go put that into a box and say, okay, here you go, Amazon sell this as new, and then somebody purchases something from Amazon. Amazon, if you are outside the US, maybe you don't know Amazon, but they're like a huge retailer. I don't know how big they are in terms of overall US, uh, US sales, but they, they definitely sell a ton of stuff. And people trust the fact that when I buy something that's shipped and sold by Amazon, that that also means that, you know, I'm getting something that's legitimate and it's not um, not counterfeit. Now I know I know that, that there have been problems with that before, but on electronic devices, this is really important, right? This is getting plugged into a PCIe bus and you could basically have pretty darn low level control if something is wrong in a PCIe device. And so if you're purchasing a new device that's on Amazon and that device, is also, you know, can be tampered with. I mean, they literally substituted an entirely different card just because the heatsink looked the same. I mean, they're clearly not the right number of checks at Amazon to go and make sure that people are not putting counterfeit goods into boxes that get sold as new. And so from a hardware security perspective, this should absolutely freak people out because on one hand, I'm inconvenienced by the fact that we have to go send this one back and you know, get a refund and all that kind of stuff. That's an inconvenience for me. And I hope it's an easy process and Amazon is usually, let's be fair to them, is usually pretty darn good with it. But on the other hand, I think that this highlights an industry need, not just at Amazon, but at other retailers to make sure that components, once they are sold to someone, should really not be put back into new stock, right? I mean, it's it's bad. It means that we probably have more restocking fees. But on the other hand, I think we also need to know if these, you know, chain of custody went not from like the manufacturer distributor to the reseller or, you know, something like that. And instead is going to the reseller, then goes to a third party, then back to the reseller and then you and sold as new. Like, I don't think that that's a good model because I think that it's one that's ripe for, you know, one day being a potential threat vector. And from a hardware security perspective, the fact that I can get this in a new box and, you know, it just scares the heck out of me. And what if this was a normal 3090? If I had gotten a, a box that says 3090 from Amazon, shipped and sold by Amazon, then I would totally assume that it's just a new one from EVGA. But if somebody had tampered with it and then sent it back to Amazon and then Amazon sent it to me, um, like, whoa, that would be crazy, right? And I just think that that is a terrible, terrible security thing. Again, as you can tell, I'm actually not too upset about the fact that Amazon sent this because on the other hand, uh, I kind of look at it like now we have a piece of content and a video and something to talk about, which I think is kind of good. But on the other hand, it is kind of bummer that I have to go through this whole process and the fact that we found something that in the supply chain is definitely a material weakness in overall hardware security. I definitely, again, want to hear everything you guys have to say about this because, you know, frankly, I think it's a really interesting topic and maybe you've gotten, you've seen something similar and I'd love to hear those stories as well. And hey, if you did like the video, we have a ton of really cool content coming up. We even have a forbidden server that we probably shouldn't have in the US uh, with, uh, with with chips that uh, processors that are ARM processors that we should not have. Uh, that'll be coming up pretty soon. It's actually in the editing queue right now, but we have a ton of really kind of cool content. If you just kind of want to see some of the stuff that may not be the kind of mainstream stuff, we have that as well. And I'm sure a lot of folks are going to talk about security when we get to that. With that though, if you did like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.